Welcome back, everyone. I uh, hope you all had a great weekend. We only have three weeks of school left, which is crazy to me, but we have a lot of work to do before the end of school. So we have Unit 7 tests coming up next week. Don't forget to sign up. I made that an assignment due Wednesday for all of you. Um, that will take place on Wednesday the 13th or Thursday the 14th. So please sign up. That's a really big deal. Some of you are missing assignments. Those assignments are meant to prepare you for this test. So get those things done, watch those lesson videos, and reach out with any questions you may have. We are going to jump into our last new, well, not really new. It's application of the quadratic formula. Um, we are going to solve a couple of real world problems. So I'm going to do only one of these, and then the second two will be your homework. So you'll have two questions for homework. If you want to stick around after I work this one two different ways, then you're welcome to, and I will work the first problem from our last assignment. A lot of people are making small but significant mistakes. Um, so I want to just work that problem, just practice a couple of things. So let's take a look at this. All right, this is uh, going back to, ooh, I can't even remember when, I think back to, Unit six before we left, the vertical motion model. So I'll write that here. So the vertical motion model. And what this is, is just a real world application of the quadratic formula, or not formula, functions, all functions. The formula is how we solve. And we will use that here. So let's, let's review one of our ways of solving quadratic functions which is factoring. So I'm going to take this thing right here. It's a quadratic because it's squared. And I'm going to set it equal to zero because this question says a catapult hurls a watermelon from a height of 10 meters with an initial vertical velocity of 23 meters per second. That's our B value. The quadratic function h of t equals negative 5t squared plus 23t plus 10 models the height of the watermelon h of t at any given time t seconds so the question says how long will it take for the watermelon to hit the ground well the ground is at zero feet so we're going to set this thing equal to zero so negative 5 t squared plus 23 t plus 10 equals zero because that's the height of the ground and that's what's required to solve this quadratic function so let's go back to factoring. So this was our a times c. So a is negative 5. I'm going to say negative 5 times 10 equals negative 50. We're going to list factors that combine to be negative, excuse me, positive 23. But when multiplied together, give us negative 50. So uh, 1 and 50, and then immediately we come to something that will give us 23. Well, 23 is positive here, so this 2 has to be negative. That is my factor pair. So we come over to the original, and this is a good review because you'll see an opportunity to solve on your test next week uh, like this using the factoring method. So take this 23, break it into negative 2t plus 25t plus 10 equals 0. And then we factor whatever they have in common from the front binomial, which are these two, and the back binomial, which are those two. So the only factor these two terms have in common is a negative t. And that leaves us with 5t plus 2 because we took that negative away. So it's now positive 2. Remember, with factoring, we duplicate this binomial. So we know that this has to be 5t plus 2 because the other binomial comes from the two things that we factored out. So to make 25 become 5, we factor out a positive 5. And just double checking, 10 divided by that same 5 does leave us with 2. So that's good. So last step here, as far as finding the factor pairs of this quadratic function, you piece together the negative t and the 5. So negative t plus 5 times 5t 
plus 2. Well, remember the zero product property says that we're going to set these equal to zero. We're going to set these equal to zero, each of them separately, and that will give us the two solutions here. Okay, so we're going to say negative t plus 5 equal, oops, equal zero. So we'll do minus 5, minus 5. That leaves us, kind of running out of space here, leaves us with negative t equals negative 5. Well, we want to know what t equals, not negative t. So we will divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. So one of our solutions is 5. Okay. Now the other solution, let's go take a look at it. All right, so let's go look at this one right here. So 5t plus 2. I'm going to set that equal to 0. So 5t plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2, subtract 2. That leaves us with 5t equals negative 2. Divide by 5, divide by 5. So t equals negative 2 fifths, which is the same as negative 0.4. Now, the question was, how long will it take for the watermelon to hit the ground? So we've got two different solutions. We've got negative 0.4, and the, the uh, units are seconds. So negative 0.4 seconds or 5 seconds. Only one of these makes sense, right? So for these real-world problems, we're looking for just the positive solutions because they are the only ones that make sense. Okay, so this is factoring. But let's bring in what we've been practicing most recently. And I'm going to jump right in. Okay, so it's the quadratic formula. I'm going to force you to look somewhere else. So negative b, b is 23 here. So I'm going to put that plus or minus the square root of all of this stuff known as the discriminant. So b squared is 23 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 5, times c, which is 10. Okay, and all of that is the square root of 729, plus or minus all that with negative 23, over 2 times negative 5. Okay, so let's talk about the square root of 729. Now, obviously, I can grab my calculator, and I can plug that in, right? The square root of 729, I'm going to do that because I can't remember. Um, oh, yeah, it's 27. Okay, so the 27. So what that means is 27 times 27 equals 729. And the radical, remember, is just asking you what number, when multiplied by itself, gives you this. Okay? So that's what the square root is, right? Some number multiplied by itself, any number multiplied. Uh, the cubed root would be any, multi any number multiplied by itself three times, but we haven't really talked about that. So I know this, and I can just put this in my calculator. If not, I can divide by 2 or 3 and try to simplify this radical, okay? And we will review simplifying radicals before that test. So be sure to uh, work the review. So let me rewrite this. So negative 23 plus or minus, this is 27, all over negative 10, okay? So we have to get two solutions here. So the first one is negative 23 minus 27, which is negative 50 over negative 10, which is positive 5 when we divide out. And our second one is negative 23 plus 27, which is going to be positive 4. The denominator is still negative 10, and it's our negative 0.4. So there are the same two solutions we came up with when we used our factoring method. But again, the only one that makes sense is this one because these are positive seconds, okay? Remember, all of these um, real-world quadratic functions are going to be uh, just the first quadrant, really, right? So shooting the watermelon or something from a certain height, and then it splats on the ground, okay? This, for us, in this problem is five seconds, okay? The initial height, which was given to us here, was 10. Okay, so just a reminder on the vertical motion model. Okay, it's really only the first quadrant because that's the only thing that makes sense. We don't do negative height and we don't do negative time.
Okay. All right. So you are going to work questions two and three. I recommend doing both factoring and the quadratic formula just for practice. Okay. Um, because you are going to be taking a test next week on these. If you are struggling with these, please reach out. We can do a Google Hangout, join the meets Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at one o'clock, okay, for half an hour. So those have been going on for about a month now. So don't miss those. It's the same link that I've sent out probably two or three times now. Check your emails, please, please, please. Okay. You should check your email. You should actually have your email tab, your Gmail tab open all day while you're doing this schoolwork, okay? So that is your clue for the attendance ticket. So take your attendance, uh, get your sign up, genius sign up thing for the next week. Make sure you get that test ready or sign up for the test so that we can get you ready and uh, we'll be good to go. All right, have a wonderful Monday, Tuesday, and I will see you all Wednesday. And if you're missing assignments, please get those done. That will help you in years to come and then it will also help you on this unit seven test coming up next week. All right, take care.